What's up, fellas? Checking out this hydro cyclone I just hooked up to the electro refining, electro winding machine, and it's doing fantastic. Look at the particles that are being removed from the flow stream. Some of that white stuff you see, I believe, is scale coming off of my heating element. This is the second part of the test. We won't be seeing this in the first part of the video, but I just wanted to show you guys how awesome this thing is working. Nice. All this stuff would be getting caught in a filter bag, filling Making it up, clogging up the flow, whereas using cyclones in tandem with the filter bags and sedimentation pond can give us a very robust filtration That's system that can run for hours and hours and hours without clogging up and reducing flow, causing a lot of yield problems because the copper consistency is dependent on these parameters maintained. I think a lot of that debris that we're seeing is coming off of this heating element. Those little specks of white material look just like the scale that builds up on the outside of these heating elements. I've got the wattage turned down to about 400 watts, so I was hoping to cool it off a little bit, but it's still showing signs of emanating that scale. This white material could also be the PVC glue that I used. It was uh, an industrial grade, but it's not the 247 grade that, that's made just for acid. We'll see how it holds up. I never go near this thing without safety glasses on. What's up, fellas? Today what we're looking at is the beginning of an experiment involving reactive electrodialysis. This here is an experimental anode basket that I'm testing. And I did several tests prior to this particular one that indicated this idea may work. So we're gonna give it a shot. This is gonna be a high flow anode basket. And what I have here are the samples that will be placed inside the anode basket. These are uh, fairly dirty cone mold ingots. They've got quite a bit of scum inside of them. And I want to test this system's ability to digest or uh, electrohydrolyze large items like this. Now, we've done the test with shot. This is some shot that I poured in some larger pieces that I threw in there. You can see what happens to one of these pyramids after a while. And this is some of the shot that we did. If you're not careful, the material can passivate. Right now it's okay, and I just wanted to show you that with an ohm meter that I have here. Now I just have it set to a uh, signal. And as you can see, if I go from one side to the other inside of this container, I get continuity, which is important. And there are certain parameters inside the cell that must be maintained to continue that continuity throughout this pile of e-waste scrap that I have poured into shot. The reason I did this is to the purpose of avoiding cranes to where a single man can load the anode baskets versus having to have a crane hoist all this stuff around. So let's get started. As I said in this particular experiment, we're gonna go with some very large items. This is one kilogram of shaker table material, all with the exception of this. This right here is hammer mill material. You can even tell by its different color. It has a more of a gold sheen to it. The um, shaker table stuff appears to have a lot of lead and perhaps tin and uh, what else that ever they use in solder. I can't remember, but you get the point. So. As you can see, that's quite a bit of material in there. And we're gonna take this cap and lock it in there. It can also be top loaded with smaller material. And the material inside of this cage is now going to act as the anode. We want to avoid turning this cage itself into the actual anode. We would rather it just serve as a special cable that connects to the material. This is not 316 stainless, which would ultimately hold up better in the process. A plastic anode is also an option. There are many options, but uh, for my own testing purposes, 
we need to get the information I'm gathering during this. So let's get on with it. Let me show you some copper artifacts. We're going to run this for 10 hours at 6.7 amps. That will put us at a target energy density of 23 milliamps per square centimeter. By the way, before I freak anybody out in the comment section, I do not intend to use this material as the actual coating. I would probably go with a glass coating if I decide to try this method to protect the anode for as long as possible. You could get years of service out of this thing if it's done out of the right material. They currently have anode baskets in service for other plating processes, though the energy densities are a lot milder in those conditions. So, at any rate, the whole reason I decided to do it is because I noticed after I painted this, you can see where the anode dissolves at different rates depending on its exposure to the cathode. So if it's covered up, we have effectively passivated this anode artificially. All right, so here is what it looks like in its natural habitat there. We're gonna cage this thing up. And you can see all the plumbing here involved. We'll get to that later. I just wanted to show you where this thing actually lives before it gets all buried in the excitement. Fellas, so here we are. The system is running. We are running at a very low voltage this time, which I like to see. Never been able to run it at a voltage that low. We're at 6.6 .6 amps. 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I've lowered the temp this time around to see if we can save that anode a little bit. And you can see inside of there. This is the main reservoir. Large amount of electrolyte in this here. You can see the turbulence has reduced drastically. And I'm hoping that any anode sludge that develops will pool up in the center of this vortex here. We also have the main cyclone, which is in fact producing anode sludge down there as you can see. Now this is off more than one run. Yeah, let's get a brighter light. See if we can get a look at that anode sludge. It's really hard to see it. Okay, so this was a 13 hour test. Energy density is still just a little bit too high. See, we got those nodules there. It also could be a problem with my plating surface. It may be too rough still. It was not a smooth piece of stainless steel that I used. And it's very important that you have a smooth piece of stainless steel. It does appear that we collected a lot of copper though in that short amount of time. The anode looks great. The coating is working. Okay guys, the reason why I started out with a 304 stainless anode basket was to enable me to develop and optimize an electrolyte solution that is compatible with this particular operation. By using a metal that erodes quickly, we can easily examine any changes that an electrolyte parameter or composition has done. For example, the first test we did, we did nothing for the anode and we lost 85 grams of mass. The second time, we did a little bit, a couple of changes, and we got it down to 65 grams of mass. The last test, the one involving what you see here with this coating, we lost zero grams. In fact, somehow we gained a gram of mass. The test where we only lost 65 involved me just wrapping a piece of plastic on there and leaving some areas ex exposed and able to illuminate the erosion properties, I guess I should say. I'm at a loss for words today. Definitely uh, tremendously increased the lifespan of any anode basket alloy we choose. Okay, fellas, so we did a 13-hour test there. 
and it would appear that the energy density is still too high. So I'm going to do another test. We're zeroing in on the energy density here. You can see we do got a nice clean deposit in there. It's wet right now. There's maybe a good look at it. See when it dries out, it's got a nice color. I'm going to peel this off of here. But uh, yeah, we're going to lower the en energy density by 50% because we're still getting preferential growth due to the uh, holes in the basket here, which did very well. I'm excited to weigh this thing. So let's bust it apart and uh, tally up what happened here. So I'm going to dump the remaining contents into this beaker here. We'll see what happens. Wow. Very cool. We had one kilogram in there. And we are currently at 939 grams of metal was digested. Kind of take a look at that, how heavily pitted it is. This is what we came up with, guys. Um, we're moving forward. We digested 61 grams. We yielded 103 grams in copper. And that was at 0 0.9 to 1.7 volts. We were at 6.7 amps continuously. We started off with 1,000 grams, ended up with 939 in the basket. 13 hour run. We digested 4.6 grams an hour and we played it out 7.9 grams an hour and this was at 23 milliamps per square centimeter so we're moving forward here we digested almost as much metal as we did in this test which was at 13.7 amps 1.5 volt this one's definitely got some sludge on it i'm going to stop touching this i'm getting valuable sludge lost in the mix here and I don't want to do that. What I'll do is I'll put these in a uh, container I have. And I'll wash this material by shaking it violently. This is very valuable anode sludge. Not that there was a lot of it right there, but just in good practice. I don't want to lose any of it. Coating the exterior of the, of the anode basket definitely helped prolong the life. Um, you can see here these ridges where I wrapped it in plastic and discovered that it inhibited erosion significantly. This is not 316 stainless steel. This is just some generic 304. Okay, we're at 429 grams. We're going for the copper now. Can you see me? You can see me. Fantastic news with this anode basket. Didn't lose a single gram in a 13 hour run. The coating is 100% success. I might have to delete that out of the video. That's how well we did on that test, guys. We're in delete the secret mode. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty thick sheet for that low of an energy. This is like six watts, guys, for 13 hours. I mean, that's cheap. Oh, what do we got? The camera here. Very clean looking copper, fellas. This is a good indication. You see what that other stuff was looking like. Now, I don't like that. We can fix that. We still have too high of an energy density, and there's also something called preferential plating taking place. The surface of the anode has to be morphologically precise. It has to be exact, or else inconsistencies in the topology and the lack of uh, homogeneousness or homogeneology will cause peaks and valleys to grow. It's kind of like... Uh, It's like an antenna. 
electroplating is not a uniform process. You can see here the difference between electrolytic plating and electroless. This is a chemical plating action. You may have seen this before where you perhaps dipped a screwdriver in a bowl of acid to stir it and maybe it had some copper sulfate in it and you notice when you pull it out it's been plated. That gives a consistent even plating but electrolysis on the other hand um, is dependent on a, many, a lot of factors especially when the copper is dirty. You have a different throw rate for certain regions. So as you have gold and other particles falling off the anode, that's causing inconsistencies with the amount of cations that are flying off the anode. So if we stir the solution rapidly, we should be able to avoid all that. And that should explain the reason why higher energy densities are capable under high flow rates. That completely explains it to me. So that isn't so hot to look at. It's not the end of the world. We do got some nice looking stuff up at the top there. Got a real nice color to it. But the fact we've got shiny copper on the back tells me uh, we just get rid of this and we're really in the clear. So what we're going to do is decrease the energy density by 50%. We'll go down to 3.3 amps and we'll do another 13 hour run. Let's weigh this bad boy. There's still more copper on here. Um, Probably several grams. I don't know that for sure, but we'll check it out. So let's see what we have here. 96 grams is the weight of the face cathode. Let's, we got, uh, I could have swore it was more than that. 96 grams, 103 grams total yield in 13 hours with six to 12 watts of power. Here's a look at the flow rate, so you can see it with the eye. A lot of bubbles and trained in there, so it could probably do better, but just thought I'd show that before it gets buried in water, because I don't like the entrained bubbles. They mess with the cyclone action. I have read in intellectual literature regarding this process of electrolysis with experimental cells that uh, lead accumulation on anodes is something that happens. So there's a possibility that the accumulation of lead on this anode has taken place. And that is why it weighed heavier than it tear out in the beginning. I'm going to run this stuff through another wash to get the rest of that anode mud out of there off of it. I'll probably end up melting this down again and turning it into shot. I just wanted to do a test to see what larger pieces do. Turns out they work out pretty good. They allow a very high flow through the anode. I have not had a chance to harvest the anode sludge at the bottom of the cyclone yet. I'm gonna wait till all the testing is done because it's easier to get a large amount out of this thing versus a little bit.